You say a Syrian refugee with machete has killed a woman in a city in the southwest of Germany. Two other people have also been injured, uh, as far as we know. For more details now, let's cross to our correspondent, Peter Oliver, who's in Germany right now for us. Uh, Peter, what um, further details do we know then about this latest attack? Hi. Well, police have confirmed that a 21-year-old Syrian asylum seeker um, has been arrested after he attacked people in the street in the town of, of Reutlingen. It's um, a small town uh, just outside of the city of Stuttgart. He's left one person dead, another two wounded after an attack uh, with a machete. Now. Um, what we are hearing from the police, what they have told us uh, in early statements, is that the 21-year-old uh, Syrian asylum seeker was known to them. They haven't said exactly why he was known to them, but he was a person that they um, had had contact with in the past. Now, the, um, the very latest that we're seeing coming out may include uh, that a, the attack was stopped by uh, somebody driving a car past that was able to, to stop this attack in some way. It left, as I said, one person dead, one woman dead, another two people injured if it seems that um, somebody has been able to, uh, to to stop this attack perhaps with their auto, automobile um, but as it stands at the moment one person dead two people wounded after a machete attack in southwestern Germany a 21 year old um, asylum seeker from Syria has been arrested at the scene by police and is currently being questioned OK thanks Peter that was artist Peter Oliver there with the latest uh, from Germany thank you well, this, of course, comes after Friday's attack in Munich. A teenager shot dead nine people aged between 13 and 45 before turning the gun on himself. What is known about the shooter is that he, at that time, was an 18-year-old German citizen of Iranian origin. Authorities say he had no criminal record but had twice been a victim of an assault himself. But he was also in psychiatric care and treated for depression. Uh, police say that he was a lone attacker with no ties to Islamic State. Previous reports claim the gunman had no links to the migrant crisis, although today it's been revealed three of his victims were children of migrants. It was horrible because next to our flat there was a woman who was covered in blood. My wife had a bottle of water. We helped to clean her. It was horrible and left me speechless. My son was shot dead. I am living as if in a nightmare. I still cannot believe what has happened. Well, the first of the attacks in Germany was on Monday night when a 17-year-old Afghan asylum seeker wielding an axe and a knife injured four people on a train. Islamic State claimed responsibility for that attack. It's thought the assailant, who was eventually shot dead by police, was self-radicalised. A, bl a black homemade ISIL flag was found in his room. The incident has reignited the debate on migrants and refugees in Europe. Islamic State also released a video that it claims is of the German train attacker in the video he announces his intention to carry out an operation in the country. Since January, more than 200,000 migrants have arrived in Germany. Four out of five did so without a passport, while in 2015, more than a million asylum seekers came to the country, although it's reported only around 30,000 have managed to find a job. The German Chancellor has long spoken of the need to help people fleeing adversity. Those who flee misery, war, political oppression, we are responsible for helping them whether we want to or not. Angela Merkel's open door policy is linked to fueling a refugee backlash in Germany, with right wing marches being a regular sight in German cities. Uh, it got to the point where one Bavarian official sent a bus full of refugees to Berlin back in January, fulfilling his promise to make Merkel personally responsible for any asylum seekers sent to his town above the quota. Here is how, how he justified the decision. 
Under these circumstances, I would rather see these people housed somewhere where they can live in a humane way. If they cannot provide humane conditions here for them, I will take them back. And that will show that our asylum policy really is a mess in this country. Well, as the number of asylum seekers grows, the anti-immigrant and anti-Islam movement known as Pegida has been gaining... <laughs> Also seeing a rise in hate crimes against newcomers. There have uh, been numerous arson attacks against refugee centres within the past year. Well, let's talk more about this uh, with Joe Quinn uh, Flores. He's the editor-in-chief of Fort Roos uh, News and President, Independent Journalists Association for Peace. Uh, plenty to talk about. Um, good to see you. Thanks for coming on to the program uh, this evening. Um, firstly, what, what's your take on this? We know there's growing tension, a lot of fury over Chancellor Merkel's open-door policy. Um, is that really to blame, though, for the incidents we've seen over the last uh, few days? It, it's a perfect storm, and and you know to to look at the open door uh, policy by itself is of course only part is only part of this equation. It is a big part of the equation, but of course it has to do with NATO's meddling in Syria that has produced this refugee crisis, and people as a result of this war uh, has uprooted millions of people who were leading normal lives and has radicalized them. And a very strange and contradictory process has taken place where people uh, became refugees as a result of Wahhabi and Qutbi terrorism of the Muslim Brotherhood in Syria and left and, and began to live in Syrian, uh, rather in Turkish, uh, uh, first aid camps and, and uh, relocation camps where they encountered radicalized imams and aid workers who came not just to help but also with an expectation that they would interpret the Quran in the same way. So it's become a self-perpetuating cycle. Uh, do you think Germany will be forced then to alter its migration policy? You know, the, these types of things are, 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 of course, going to increase the pressure on the German government to change its disastrous policy. You have many people who are not only radicalized, but also mentally ill. These are people who, and it's hard to speak of them as victims right at the same moment that they have victimized someone else, but these are people who have witnessed uh, war crime. These are people who themselves have had family members literally beheaded and dismembered in front of them. And this has scarred them. And it's a normal thing in a, in a very strange way that people replicate the very same crimes committed against them. And the fact that the German government has not been able to put in place an effective method of screening, uh, let alone the fact that the resources of the German state probably would never exist to be able to screen the literally hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people who came all at once. So it's just been completely catastrophic and the, the, the social system has been completely stretched and really unable to do its job. Sure. Is there a danger here also, uh, Joaquim, that, yes, certainly I, I take everything you've said, but there are many violent crimes that take place every day and there seems to be a tendency to try and connect as many of them as we can to the potentially Islamic State or link it to the refugee crisis when we don't actually know the full circumstances behind everything. 
That's correct. Now, there has been, of course, a rush to judgment in many cases, but in most and majority of cases that have happened recently, we have also, of course, then finally determined that these people had been refugees or that they, and, or that they had been radicalized. There are, of course, uh, a very disastrous problem uh, where the German government has allowed uh, Qatari and Turkish and Saudi uh, religious institutions to operate NGOs fully and openly in Germany, which has a secondary uh, mission to radicalize people who were born in Germany, uh, German citizens themselves. So it is, of course, a rush to judgment to say that these are necessarily refugees at the same time. It's such horrible timing because these things are happening now and they weren't happening four years ago. They weren't even happening three years ago uh, when the war was in its first year and a half. And so it is very natural to connect these things. Even if we commit some logical fallacies, we cannot blame people for making these connections. And at the same time afterwards, often these connections often tend to be true. OK, Joaquin, look, just stay on the line there for a moment, if you would, because we'd just like to tell our viewers, in addition to today's machete attack, which saw uh, one person killed in southwest Germany, it is uh, the third uh, attack that we've uh, seen uh, over the last week. Just three days ago, the German interior minister commenting on the recent spate of uh, terror attacks in Europe did warn of the risk of future violence by radicalised individuals. The entire EU, with Germany its focal point, is the target of international terrorism. Therefore, I've been saying for some time now that we're in a serious situation, and we have to expect attacks by small groups or radicalized loan operators in Germany. Even if these words are hard to say, it's my duty to do so. There will be other attacks and there will be other innocent people killed. We must not become accustomed, but learn to live with this menace. Well, this video from Munich just after the attack there shows people holding their hands up on uh, police orders as officers secure the pr premises, that shopping centre, the Olympia Shopping Centre in Munich. Uh, there was a similar scene, though, in Nice uh, the other week, too, as police escorted people away with their hands on their heads. That after the terror attack there, which uh, saw a, a lorry uh, plough through crowds who were celebrating Bastille Day uh, just a few days ago. So let's return then to Joaquin Flores uh, to talk more about perhaps the general trends that we're seeing at the moment. Um, Joaquin, there have been sort of fears really that Europe is now facing a new reality. Is that going too far? You know, it, it's, it's not going too far. This is uh, the reality that Europe is facing and European leaders have done this. They've done this to themselves. They have followed uh, what has been admittedly, uh, Merkel herself had admitted several years ago, that the policy of multiculturalism was not working for Europe. This is not to say that there isn't room in Germany for, for migrants from all over the world, but the fact that German policy has not been to Germanize uh, these people, who certainly uh, talking about people who've gone through the legal process, but rather instead have created safe zones and safe spaces for them, uh, you know, to the detriment of the rights of German citizens uh, who are longtime Germanized or who are uh, indigenous Germans. And this has been caused a, a very serious cultural rift within Germany with disastrous consequences socially. Uh, and just briefly, I know it's a sort of quite a complicated answer or well, question to answer, but why has it been so difficult to integrate people? There, there's a lack of will. It is not politically correct. Uh, and there has been a very, uh, the European Union in its modern incarnation has had a very difficult time uh, being able to describe itself what it is. It, it has described itself along a line of values which it claims are universal and that are not European. And in so doing, they've taken imperial road in, in, in their approach to other countries, telling other countries through NATO that, that they need to become more like what Germany uh, might be, but then within Germany, they've taken a course of allowing uh, individuals and groups and even uh, uh, lobbyist groups from other countries to create their own sort of ghettoized spheres within Germany and, and without touching them. And of course, there's a parliamentary machine, there's political pressure, there are unfortunately some uh, radicalized, uh, ultra radical groups uh, from Germany uh, that also would like to see uh, Europe implode because they, they have maybe some good intentions. They would like to see some equal redistribution of the wealth. They would like to see a very serious change in, in, and they are also against NATO policy, but they think that Europe needs to be destroyed for this to happen. And they are putting 
their uh, lot in with the hopes that uh, this sort of social tension will accomplish that goal. OK, well, Keem, look, we have to leave it there, but good to get your thoughts on all of that. Uh, a lot of information to take in there, but uh, thanks for coming on to RT. That was Joaquin Flores um, from, uh, do you beg your pardon, Flores, the editor-in-chief of Fort Roos and News President, Independent Journalist Association for Peace. A long title. Thanks, Joaquin.